Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. We have some special guests here. But first, let's take a look at our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard and a hard-working crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. Pretty comfortable today, high of 78, low of 63, and our water temperature at the end of the pier is hanging in there around 81 degrees. It's been pretty steady right there. Let's take a look at our river region brought to us by Panama City Coca-Cola. Take a look at Apalachicola at Blunstown. It is reading this morning at 8.2, pretty steady, pretty steady. And the Choctash at Caraville has gone up a little bit. It's at a 7.4 this morning as you start making plans for your weekend uh, river outings. Uh, the river right now is in pretty decent shape. We just don't know how much rain we're going to have the next couple of days, so we'll just go from there. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn right here on 23rd Street. We're looking at a, a whole week of just great tides. The low tide this morning is right, right at midnight. We had a low tide. It's coming in, coming in right now. It's going to be high right after lunch, about 101. And we're looking at a really strong incoming tide and a strong outgoing tide. Our wind direction now this morning will be coming out of north, northeast, again, in double figures from about 10 to 12. All right, we're going to take a break, come back with our special guest. Okay, welcome back and welcome to our guest this morning in honor of National Safe Boating Week. We're from the Coast Guard. We have Chief, I mean, Master Chief Irvin. Yes, sir. Yes, welcome sir. to the show. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Coast Guard Auxiliary, Tony White. He's been on before. We're glad to have you back. Thank you for having us. So we have all kinds of things to talk about because <clears throat> uh, this is a big week in the boating world and so many of us have boats and there's so many things going on. And I thought, well, the best way to do it is just go to the source, the main source of our safety and they're taking care of us on the water, the Coast Guard, U.S. Coast Guard. So, uh, Master Chief, uh, glad to have you. Thank you, sir. It's an honor. Thank you for having us. I was asking, are you, where are you from originally? Originally from Nashville, Tennessee. And okay. uh, like I was telling you before, I'm a, I'm a, I was raised in the Army, so ended up settling in Augusta, Georgia. Okay. And listen, I said, wait a minute, your dad was in the Army, a career Army guy. And you ended up in the Coast Guard. What's up with that? Well, you know, I, I wanted to join the Army, but then my, my father ended up saying, no, you're not joining the Army. Uh, why don't you join the Coast Guard? So here I am 23 years later. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> well, we, we're proud of all the service y'all have you, to us here, especially along the coastline. So uh, tell us, uh, you have all kinds of stuff, so you go ahead and talk well, about it. Well, yeah, again, sir, thank you for having us. Tony, thank you for uh, um, making me aware of this, this broadcast. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, from... Since 1958, the president has proclaimed this week to be uh, pro week to be um, National Safe Boating Week uh, prior to Memorial Day, and a uh, few few things I did want to talk about. Um, first of all, this this runs from May 20th to May 26th, and uh, this is pretty much kicks off the the, um, the the how busy the water is going to get throughout the summer. So we, we just want to make sure people are doing th what they need to do on the water to stay safe. And so a few things I want to talk about is a wearing your proper the proper life jacket. Um, and, and Tony will touch base more on this later. But just when you when you purchase a life jacket, make sure it is United States Coast Guard approved and it'll it'll say that on the actual life jacket itself and just make sure everyone on board has a life jacket it's the law and highly highly recommend wearing your life jacket at all times um, 81 percent of boating fatalities were, were caused were drownings and 83 83 percent of those were not wearing a life jacket so that just that shows you the high percentage of um, if you wear your life jacket it'll save your life it's kind of, I compare it to a seat belt. You, you, when you wear your seat belt, you never know when you need it until you need it. So please, please, while you're out there on the water, wear your life jacket to stay safe. Next, um, I like to talk about engine cutoff switches. Um, if your boat was manufactured with an engine cutoff switch, you should attach that to your life jacket at all times. Uh, this, this, this function um, is there so if you fall off your boat, it automatically pulls this lanyard and then cuts your engine off so the boat does not continue to usually go in circles or keep going until we have to chase it down or it runs somebody else over or it runs yourself over. So that's the law. Please wear your engine cutoff switch if it, is, if it was manufactured on your boat. Um, next, I'd like to talk about your 
EPIRB, emergency positioning indica indicating radio beacon. Um, definitely have one on board if you're gonna go offshore anywhere beyond three nautical miles. Um, highly recommended to have, have it anyways. Uh, it, it, if, you, um, if you're in distress, you, you can push a button or pull a tab and it'll uh, cause a signal to go off and then we can locate you um, where you're at on the water at the time. And how you register this, you go through uh, NOAA's, NOAA website and it'll walk you through the steps on how you uh, actually register the, um, the EPIRB. Um, and then lastly, alcohol, alcohol consumption. Um, while you're on your vessel, it's just like being in a car. If you're, gonna, if you're going to pilot your vessel, you should not consume alcohol. Um, always have a designated driver. Uh, we don't want anybody to get hurt out there. So if you, go, if you are going to drink, please have a designated driver on your vessel. And stay safe. Most importantly, we want everybody to have fun this weekend. It's um, Memorial Day weekend and throughout the summer. So just stay safe out there. And if you have any questions, all this information is on uscgboating.org. That's uscgboating.org. And you can find everything I talked about on that website. What well, a great point. There are so many just simple things like that. The seatbelt, the kill switch, uh, don't drink. And we, you know, we, we talk about it over and over again, but it's so good to hear from these guys who are out there every day and, and, and y'all are aware of a lot of, a lot of these things. Yes, sir. And I, I know y'all have. And uh, I'll get back to the kill switch. We had a fatality a year, about two years ago with a local guy that if he'd had his kill switch on, mm -hmm. you know, he would have survived it. But, and that was right here inland here uh, in, in a little bayou. Yes, also, uh, on the funny side of the kill switch, how many times have we all uh, couldn't start our motor because the kill switch? Exactly. <laughs> we've, all, we've all done that. I, I got to the boat ramp down in St. Joe Park uh, last, about two years ago. I mean, I, I know better than all of And uh, I'd gotten up to sort of get some stuff ready. My buddy had backed the trailer down. And I said, I can't get it started. I can't get it started. <laughs> Something wrong with it. It yeah. kill switch. <laughs> all right. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with our guest. Welcome back here with Master Chief Urban, and also we're talking about uh, Tony White with Coast Guard Auxiliary, and I, I asked him, have you been in Panama City how long? Almost a year, sir, yes, sir. And how do you like it? Oh, I love it. It's such a patriotic little community. It is. It is. I love, yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, uh, Tony, you were coming from Coast Guard Auxiliary. Y'all do a lot of volunteer work and so much. So you take this in right here, so tell us what's going on. Well, so part of Safe Boating Week, we've, uh, we do courtesy vessel safety checks okay? okay they're free then and basically what we do is we make sure that when you hit the water that all of your equipment is in serviceable condition you know that the boat is safe to operate and you don't have any anything that you're not aware of that needs to be repaired and one of those things that we do is we inspect the life jackets so there's new regulations for the life jackets coming out you don't have the old type one, type two, type three, and type four anymore. What you have now is you have a European style icon uh, centric uh, rating system that is closely resembles the uh, Canadian's style. Okay. Okay. So what it is, is is that the old type one, and this is important, especially for the six pack guys and stuff like that, because they need to make sure that they're carrying type one life jackets, but you won't be, you won't find type one anymore. Okay, so we're, okay, I'm gonna put it up on the screen. You, you there you go. This, okay, yeah. type one. Ex exactly. Yeah. Okay, so tell us what, what this is. Okay, so what this is, is, is that these ratings are in buoyancy in Newtons. And so what I've done is I've, I've, I've equated that to how many pounds. Now, the, an average 200 pound person in the water weighs about 10 pounds. And okay. so you can see that the 22, 33, the 15, and the 15 pounds that I have there are, um, are the equivalency in pounds. But what's most important to notice and what makes that a type one is that it has the turning icon. You see the little, the little uh, open circle. Right here, okay. That right there. So what right. that tells you is that not only will it provide the proper amount of buoyancy, but it will also turn you face up. Mm. And that's okay. what makes it a type one. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So, All right. Now, if you, 
if you see that icon with the slash through it, that means that it will not turn you right side up. All right? So another thing that you need to do is that when you are looking at the label on the inside of the, uh, of the life jacket, make sure that you look down and find where it says Coast Guard approved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if you get, the, okay. okay, so down right there, if you look right at the very bottom of that, we have, there you go, see it? Yeah. Right next to the UL, it says USCG Coast Guard approval, and it has a number. And that means that the Coast Guard has deemed this proper for wear, okay? Okay. If we're seeing a lot of them in the stores that only have the UL, okay. and they're being manufactured out of the country, you know, and in other places, and the UL is not is not good enough. Okay. So you want to make sure that you've got those. Okay? That's the interesting point because mm -hmm. most people will see the UL, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. and yeah, think it's exactly. Okay. Right. You've got to be Coast Guard approved. Coast Guard approved. Yes, sir. That's that is point. correct. That's what you want because okay. you know you know you can depend upon that. We have found other devices and inflatables and yes. stuff like that that were only UL listed. Okay. Yes. And upon inspection, we found out that they're not serviceable. They're not. They're not. Interesting. Uh, yes. Right. And then the other thing that you'll look for up on that label is anything that has a slash through it means that it's 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 uh, not approved for that type of activity, okay. whether it be jet ski or tubing or skiing. And most likely, what's happened is those those vests have not been impact tested, or they um, didn't pass the impact test. Good point. Okay. And that's, and that's a good segue into uh, fire extinguishers as well, sir. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the marine type has to be USCG approved, and it will set out in the fire extinguisher. And there was a new rule that came out on April 20th, or uh, yeah, April 20th, 2022, that if your fire extinguisher is over 12 years old, even if it's still in the green, it is expired and it has to be taken out of service and then you have to purchase another. That's a good so, point. Most people don't know that. No, and I wasn't sure yeah. about myself. And that, just for a safety factor, we didn't get uh, every few years to get some new fire extinguishers. That if is you, no yeah, brainer. Right. Yeah. Look on the bottom of the okay. fire extinguisher and you'll see the date year of manufacture is stamped into it. It also, if your fire extinguisher is a several years old, you might want to go, and it's a kid. Yeah. Yes. There's a recall good out. Point. So you can go and you can check your lot number on the kid website and also find instructions on how to turn it in and get a, a replacement for free. Oh, cool. Okay, so you wanna, those are, those are the two things that you really should have on the boat and they need to be up to snuff. We all need to do that, y'all do that for me. Check this sometime this week or today if you get a chance, run out there and check, check your fire extinguisher and just check it out. If it looks any way old or something, go get a new one. It's not that Absolutely. expensive. Yes. And it's not worth it to take a chance because I don't know Coast Guard, you've seen a situation where yes, sir. it just booms. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. So, and if you happen to be um, uh, this coming weekend, mm -hmm. we're gonna be at St. Andrews State Park Marina. Okay. We'll be doing uh, vessel safety checks. So, and we'll be looking at things like that. And then the following weekend, we're gonna be over at Dolphin Bay. Oh, cool. So we're gonna, we're gonna be there. Hopefully we'll get some help from the from you the think professionals. Be able to help you out a little bit? Or? Yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll help out. <laughs> <laughs> and these are, these are courtesy inspections. So yeah. that's yeah. what the auxiliaries are here for, to make sure you have everything that you need to stay safe on the water. So if right. you, uh, please show up for that. And it doesn't matter what size boat or just no. you, you guys nope. go inspect all size vessels. All size, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know last year uh, y'all had a good turnout. Y'all had, had some good. Yep. Yeah, we we're, as a matter of fact, we're doing, uh, we're well over 100 uh, vessels this year already. Wow. So it's it's going good. And the it's the kayaks and the paddle craft that are really starting to explode. Yes. Yes. So, what's the biggest challenge with those? Getting them to wear their life jacket. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And now, you know, even on jet skis, we had a, just a fatality two weeks ago. Yeah, you know, DuPont Bridge. A young man was not wearing his life jacket. And uh, unfortunately, you know, these jet skis these days go up to almost 60 to 70 they knots. Fly. And if you fly off it, it you know, something yeah. bad happens, it knocks you out, and now you don't have yeah. a life jacket on. So that's so important to make sure you're wearing your life jackets. Yeah, we, we talk about life jacket <laughs> use a lot, and uh, my, my buddies and I, we wear, when we were younger, we didn't wear a life jacket because no. you know, we were just didn't need it because I could swim 10 miles or whatever. <laughs> but uh, as we've gotten more mature 
and, and looked around at these accidents and all. We, when we get up with Bill Allen, I go fishing, or, or our friends or family, we put on our life. Yeah, it's absolutely. just automatic you know. It's yeah. automatic. Yeah. And uh, I, I know a lot of y'all, we've talked about it. And they're making it a lot more comfortable now. Absolutely. <laughs> That's one of the reasons. Thin inflatable types yeah. that are, are bulky and you, yeah, have, you, know, you can move around. It's, we uh, joked about you don't have a Michelin tire guy. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let's take a final break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Here with Master Chief Urban, U.S. Coast Guard, and also from the Coast Guard Auxiliary, uh, Tony White. We're glad to have them. A couple of uh, items before we get back with them. And fishing game time today brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. Our time is 3.39 to 5.39 this morning and 4.04 to 6.04 this evening. Also want to mention this weekend, the tournament down at Howard Creek. We've talked about it, the big James Mathis Memorial Tournament. They do a great job with it. <laughs> it's a brim tournament, and uh, we've talked about it before. Uh, let me go ahead and show the post because, let me see. These guys, here it is right One more time. James Mathis brim, a brim fishing tournament and a fish fry. Shout out, folks are putting it on, $50 a boat. We've talked about it. If you don't want to fish, go down there and get some fresh brim fried up right there at the Upper Landing Pavilion. And there the boys putting it on. And uh, it's a good time to be had by all. And also, there, they sent me this too. I'm just going to hold it up because they didn't get a picture of it. Live music by Grace oh, and Grit. You, yeah. you know, that's got to be, that's gotta be a good time. Right Grace there. and yeah. Grit, I mean, they got to be good. They're Howard mm -hmm. Creek Upper Landing from 6.30 to 10.30. Oh, Y'all send me some of those. I dance. might have to go out of that and take a Coast Guard boat out there. <laughs> you know, that would be, <laughs> that would be cool to drive out there. Uh, Y'all send the pictures of all those folks there down there dancing the night away on Saturday night of Memorial Day weekend. Okay, we've got a couple other items. Yes, sir. I just want to touch base again on the, the importance of... Um, if you're going to consume alcohol while on your vessel, please have a designated driver. It's just like being in a vehicle. Um, you're taking that risk. You're putting other lives in risk, and it's against the law. So please, please have a designated driver this weekend and throughout any time you're boating. And, it'll and, just, and it'll just save your life. We were talking to everybody who mentioned this. The place, we talked about Crab Island, about what over there in Destin, just stay away from it because most of those folks are drinking. It's getting pretty bad now, Shell Island. I hate Shell to say Island's it. Getting, I, didn't, it is, I didn't think it'd come down this way, but I guess y'all see it there too. Absolutely, and, and and if you're seeing it out on the water, please report it as well, because you never know when that person leaves, and uh, could uh, take a life or yeah. take their own life. So uh, let, us know. Some, let us know about it. Y'all make some local arrests. Uh, absolutely, we uh, we go out, we uh, we get the person back safely. Uh, work with FWC on these uh, situations as well, and. Make sure everyone stays on, st stays safe out there. That's, that's so good. And then the other thing I wanted to say, sir, just to uh, revisit the all this information we talk about is on uscgboating.org. So uh, you can always revisit that uh, website to find out any of this information. So. One one thing too, we talked about mm -hmm. this. This uh, icon, red arrow points this thing right here. Uh, we're looking at uh, about store mm -hmm. life jacket. Store in a cool, dry place out of sunlight. Uh, a lot of us don't do that. That's important. Very important, yes, sir. And and, and just to uh, also touch base on, make sure it's accessible as well. Um, if you do store it somewhere, don't have it hidden way back in a compartment where you can't grab it quickly. Because when your when your boat's going down, it, it goes down very quickly, and you yeah. need to be able to access that life jacket within seconds. I think yes, the best sir. place to store it is on your body. Uh, <laughs> I I totally agree with that, Tony. That's yeah. a that's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> store that thing store on, on your, your body. On your body. You when when you get around. home, y'all gonna take it off. Don't sleep with it. <laughs> okay. but, but you're exactly right. When you get home, store it in a cool, dry place yeah. where so it doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't dry rot. That's cool. Absolutely. Yeah, and make sure that it's Coast Guard approved. Now, that's a big Correct. thing there. I've right, got a couple minutes left. Now, like I said, the biggest challenges for the Coast Guard is just trying to keep a body straight and behaving and, and try to patrol and. Yeah, that's right, sir. And just uh, wear a life jacket when you're a jet skis or a kayak or a paddleboard. It's the, it's the law. And uh, just stay safe out there. You're talking about the uh, Coast Guard helicopters. They're calling in at all kinds of different oh, night, absolutely. Night time, 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Those guys just rough waters. They, 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 uh, they do it all. And I know y'all doing rescues and all. That's got to just be challenging yet very rewarding. Very rewarding, yeah. It's it's uh, when you get out there. Just maybe a month or two ago, when we found those two gentlemen in a life raft, they had been drifting for like 40 hours, and oh, we came across them. And wow. it, 
you know what it, it, that just makes the job right there. Oh, wow. You know when you when you're out there and you find these individuals that are that's not hanging move. on to for their life. You know and that's not going to move, is it? Oh yeah, yeah right. hanging yeah. on. Yeah. I, I remember reading about that. So I guess the details of it though, when you found them, I guess. Uh, you drop th drop things down to them, or one of the guys go down with them. How do y'all do that? Well, in situations, yeah, the uh, rescue swimmers will drop down in the water and make yeah. sure they have everything they need to uh, to survive. That's got to be cool. Stick around with them yeah. until they actually can. We can pull them out of the water. Yeah. You mentioned EPIR. Uh, we have, when we go offshore fishing, we always have EPIR. That that's been a great. Absolutely, and those you know we can. They're so accurate these days, we can detect that within three meters. So if wow. you have that and it's activated, we will find you. Yeah. And just make sure it's registered through the NOAA website. Yeah. And electronics have made such an advancement since, since absolutely. you've been in service. Oh, I guess you've seen it go. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I've started off with the little green radar screens back in the early 2000s. And now we have, you know, you have sonar at the bottom of the... Uh, the ocean now you can see pretty much at the bottom of the ocean so it's, it's changed a lot. Well the big question can you see the big fish? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a fishing show too, right? <laughs> that's uh, right. Well all right, trying to wrap it up. Y'all gonna be up here uh, at the at the state park. Yes, yes. Uh, this, yeah, this weekend. weekend. Well, what time do we be there? We'll probably set I see the the park opens at around eight, so we'll probably be there right around then. Okay. Okay. And uh, be there and then uh you ought to be doing some things later on or at, or at another place you were going to? Was, uh, yeah, Dolphin Cove. Okay. And that's the following weekend, right? Don't you? Yep. Yeah. The that's following the weekend. weekend. Mm -hmm. so take yeah. advantage of this. Uh, and, and it's free. And so, and have any questions, uh, be glad to uh, talk to these guys about it, what you should or should not do. And the big thing is safety and wearing a jacket. Absolutely. Yeah. And these courtesy inspection, inspections that the auxiliary conduct set you up for success. So when we board you, you have everything you need to. Uh, pass your inspection, so very important. Yeah, you get that little sticker and they know that you've already been looked at. And you don't, have to, you don't have to wait for us to do that. You can actually go online and request a vessel safety check. Awesome. And what will happen is that you'll fill out a small form, you'll put your name, telephone number, and okay. an email address. Okay, we gotta check out, they wave it at us. Okay, thank you so much, you know, we yes, appreciate sir. you Yes, sir, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank All you, right. sir. Y'all do something good for someone today. Enjoy our beautiful outdoors, take care of it, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.